This time on shift points, Dad gets a little custom. Custom. With a C, not with a K. It's a, it's a good kind of custom, not a bad. If you spell custom with a K, it's, it's probably not going to be the best quality stuff. We're back here again, uh, working on the truck. We've, uh, I was gone pretty much all last week. Dad had to do some maintenance on, you know, the cars that we actually use every day. Uh, so the truck's kind of been sitting. We got the plumbing wrapped up. I'm not even going to put the camera up there and show you anymore. I mean, I think everyone, including us, we're tired of looking at it. So we're happy it's done. We'll have to tighten everything up and get everything cleaned up. We'll show you that whenever we get there. But at this point, we're going to just kind of let it let it be. <laughs> so this morning, um, we've been over the past few years, we've been using a company called Deutsch Tech for their shocks uh, as a dealer form and things like that. So uh, we got hooked up with them probably five or six, seven years ago um, to work with. Their stuff's really good. I put a set on my uh, on my 86 truck and on the 76 Jimmy that I've got. Uh, Dad's got a, has put them on a few different things over the years too. So we want to take and look at the suspension and get some measurements for it because we want to go ahead and get those um, get those ordered. So you saw it um, a few videos back looking at the front suspension. We have these stiff knees in here. Uh, this basically just has the truck at ride height. So that holds everything where it needs to be as you, bolt, as, as you assemble everything and you can set all your set all your dimensions and all that off of those. Um, but this morning we're going to take and, and try and figure out the travel and figure out the length of shock that we need um, so we can uh, reach out to them and they'll get and we'll get them to build us a set basically. Um, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna try and find the center, you know, at ride height, and then we'll need uh, extension and travel. Um, so we're gonna measure through that and figure out those numbers and get that figured out so that we can get them ordered. Hopefully, first thing in the morning. And if everything goes right, we'll have them by the end of the week. The plan, I would say, the loose plan is to r get this thing off jack stands, roll it outside, and try and fire it for the first time this week, if at all possible. So. We don't know. You know how that goes. Some things, sometimes things don't go to plan. Uh, that's kind of our loose plan at this point. Okay. Tell me what you're doing. I'm just uh, uh, getting some dimensions for uh, the uh, shocks. So I'm rear of this thing. I, we made the... Uh, Here. Take the camera and show me what you're looking at. This way. We made the uh, uh, made the plates and put in the uh, uh, frame rails. You can see that. I'm not the best in the world running this camera, but you can see that. That's the upper shock mount. Uh, this is the lower, which is just attached to the the uh, spurring plate. And I was just getting dimensions center to center on those bolts and kind of making a, an estimate on shock travel. I'm thinking six to seven inches of, of total travel on the shocks with a 14 inch center to center. And the, uh, the uh, lower shock pin is, is five eighths uh, for, the, for the bushing on the lower shock is five eighths. Uh, the upper shock, is hang on a second. Let's see if I can get that dimension. It's like six eighty seven. Is that eleven sixteenths? I think it's eleven sixteenths. Uh, the top pin is is eleven sixteenths uh, pin diameter. So. We can give all that information to Deutsch Tech, and uh, they will uh, uh, probably, they possibly might have a shock in stock. If they don't, uh, they'll build us one. And they've, they've got real high quality shocks. They, I've had real good luck with them. Unless something's changed, uh, they've got uh, really good quality shocks. It seemed to last real well, so uh, we're going we're gonna to try to do that. So we'll do... That's the rear. We'll get those set up. So I, here I went and uh, wrote down everything for the center to center. Keep documents, uh, kind of document what we've measured. 
So now we can go to the front and do the same thing and get an idea. For We've got shocks for the front. We oh, got shocks, for, shocks the front. for the front? They come with the kit. Oh, okay. Never mind. So we only had to measure the rear shocks. Sorry, I was thinking that we uh, I was thinking we had to do it on the front as well. So the the heights kit came with the shocks. So we only had to order the we only had to measure and order the ones for the rear. So we told you guys in the previous episodes we were working on all the plumbing. We ended up having to space that radiator forward about an inch. Uh, so we have some metal spacers here that go in between the radiator and the actual radiator cradle itself, right here on this side into these what used to be the stock threaded inserts right here. And that's what's getting it spaced out toward the front of the truck to give us that clearance for all of our uh, coolant lines. Well, to be fair, <laughs> putting the radiator in and out was not an easy job. It was kind of a hassle. You had to use magnet and put a washer in, run the bolt through the washer, and then push the bolt on through, put the spacer down with a magnet, run it through. So what Dad's doing now, he's actually already drilled these inserts out right here. So you can see instead of having threads in them anymore, now they're now they have been drilled out. He's putting threaded inserts into the actual uh, fan shroud and the end of the radiator itself. So the fan shroud is riveted onto this radiator like you guys saw. He's putting in these threaded inserts now. Uh, he's already got these two in over here and then just got finished with this one. Now he's putting in this one. So a while back, he made a tool to do this with because uh, if anybody, if any of you guys have put these inserts in that are this size, the big, these are the 5 16 18, but any of the big ones using the, uh, using the, the actual hand tools you're supposed to use to put them in with, it's really hard. I mean, it takes a lot of pressure to mash it and to get that insert to collapse uh, and to, yeah, he's pulling one out here. So you can see, I mean, yeah, so he's welded that one. It's our, It broke. I'm trying to put one in. And you can see there's just not a whole lot of leverage. I mean, you've got maybe 12 inches or so of leverage on that to try and put those in. And it takes a lot of pressure to, to get that insert to collapse. So he made that piece. goes in like this. And then use a 11 16 and a half inch wrench, ratchet wrench on top and just a regular wrench on the bottom to hold the insert. You can take... And as you tighten that bolt up down here on the bottom, you can see that that insert starts to collapse where those, uh, where the knurling is. The insert itself starts to collapse. And then that's basically sandwiches the top of it. So yeah, so you can see it has this flange around the top here, and then that collapses here on the bottom, and that threaded insert then just kind of, uh, once it collapses, it collapses onto this hole and sandwiches these pieces together, and boom, it's it's steady. It's gonna, it's in there rock solid. So it's just another thing that Dad's made <laughs> to try to make everything just a little easier. So we've been trying to figure out, so. Like I've said a few times, we've this is set for quite a while, and sometimes you kind of forget how everything goes. Uh, we've been trying to figure out where this hose that goes into this crossover. It's a steam line, right, Danny? Yeah. yeah, steam line. We were trying to figure out where this goes. It's a formed hose. Kind of looks like it might go over there or something. I don't know. We're not sure. You know what's nice about having, like, four cars that have the same engine and everything in it? You can just go out here and check it. We come right here. This is a 2008 Tahoe. Same, basically the same everything. You can see, we turn our light on. See that hose comes out of this little steam line. Don't you love this? The other reason why this plastic loom, we talked about using that braided stuff. The other reason why this plastic loom kind of sucks is over time it does that. So, anyway, this hose here comes up. It's actually a steam port. It goes into the radiator here, which is perfect because we have a spot on our radiator for that. So, like I said, sometimes having a bunch of other cars helps you as you're building certain ones in general. So, it's always good. So, I'm under the truck now, and I've showed this before 
the brake booster, master cylinder and everything is mounted is mounted under the truck. There's a, a reservoir that runs up and mounts up on the firewall. And that's where you actually put in the fluid. But since this thing has been under here for so long, we decided there was a couple things we need to do. Well, first off, we just wanted to take everything out, make sure that, that everything was how it was supposed to be. All these lines were already run. Um, so I've already been under here before now. Kind of getting all this disconnected, but you can go back and look at some of the other videos to see how all this is run. There's some of the some of the other lines that are made and kind of go from the master cylinder to the proportion valve here. So um, I've already got those pulled off. So I'm going to go ahead and get this pulled out um, so that we can check everything. The other thing that we want to do is put a, a grade 8 bolt in here uh, so that we can, uh, you know, just have a little bit extra protection. We want to make sure everything's as good as it can be. Um, this is actually the brake switch. I don't think I've ever actually showed this. Uh, but this is the, the brake switch that goes for that. Um, this has the, the lockup converter, torque converter in it. Uh, so this is a, this switch is very important whenever you're doing that. So we run this through on the bottom of this uh, brake lever here with this cam. And then we have this adjusted. So just, just after you press the brakes, this uh, switch uh, is made. And so... Basically, the switch is not made while it's being pressed, and then it gets made once it once you actually let off of it. And so that's what actually activates your brake lights and make sure you unlock your torque converter whenever it's uh, doing that. So, so that's just something else that we've got already taken care of. The other thing we have to do is we have to get a brake return spring on here somewhere. So I think that we we think that actually that this um, was where that was was originally the brake return switch. Or spring was where the we put this so now we're gonna have to kind of do something else uh, just like just like a throttle return spring so if i press that brake lever you saw it there so if i reach up here and i pull that that's like i'm pressing the brake if you let go of it on its own it just stays there so you don't want that so you need a big spring to make sure that once you let off the brake pedal it automatically returns where it's supposed to so now we have to kind of think about that that spring has to be in here somewhere so that you get the maximum amount of leverage to make sure that it uh, make sure that, that spring actually pulls this back so just one more thing but i'm going to go ahead and get this pulled out next so i've already got all these lines disconnected so it looks like four bolts in this whole assembly should come back and drop out <laughs> You saw it. It's out now. It's down here. Um, just like everything else on here, <laughs> there is zero, zero extra space. So it was a bit of a, a fight. I ended up having to take the proportion valve off before I could ever get this whole assembly out. So go ahead and did that. This cross member was kind of in the way, but I was able to kind of twist the whole assembly up and then kind of rotate it out and get it out. So definitely definitely a tight squeeze um this actually worked out good so it looks like i had some wire of some of my wire loom that was not actually behind this brake line like i wanted it to be so good things out this is i think i showed this already but this is also the uh basically the failure warning light for the uh, proportion valve so if you have um the front or rear brakes go out the proportion valve shuttles to the other side that does still have brakes to make sure you still have some amount of brake to get you where you're going but it also grounds out that piece here and and turns a red light on on the dash to make sure that you uh, know that you have a problem so that's also there so all that's all together now this is out we can check and make sure everything's how it should be we need to figure out this we got to figure out this return spring thing uh, but in general not too bad just no extra space. So basically, the radiator on this thing is for a 54 Chevrolet truck, 55, first series 55 Chevrolet truck with a six cylinder basically. So 
If we'd bolted this thing where it was supposed to be with the proper engine and everything, it would have just probably fell right in place, no problem. But we've had, just like everything else, this bunch of stack up, a bunch of all this, you know, everything stacking up everywhere we go, basically. So basically, we are taking that, uh, the upper brace that Dad built to kind of brace the top of the radiator, taking that and moving the, bo the bolts that were used to bolt that in place, moving them outside so that we can clear the threaded inserts that we put in the, the radiator because basically that radiator needs to almost free hang in there, right? Like you don't want it to be, if, you, if it's bound up in any way, you hit a bump or, any, uh, or twist in the road, it could take and twist that radiator and bust it. So, you know, that thing needs to be almost sitting in there neutral once it's bolted in place. No forces in any direction, basically. So that's what we're trying to do. You know, that's, <laughs> it's been a big job and it's basically fought us on and on, but I think we're this close to having it in place how it, how it really needs to be so you can actually put it together so hopefully we'll have that together here soon so everything's in here we ended up having to change where we mounted this center support bar there so you can see where the old hole was and now where the new one is when that happened it's kind of tightened up everything again because we had some spacers in here to space this out so you can kind of see now that the these holes don't exactly line up like they need to now because it's against the radiator. So I think tomorrow we're going to try and either space this out or maybe just trim this piece or something because we want that radiator out as far as we can get it. So basically, as of today, radiator like 10 us zero. <laughs> it's It's been very difficult to work with and the stack up is just insane. So yeah, we'll just, I'm gonna go home and eat some supper because I'm really hungry and uh, See what we find out tomorrow. Well, it's the next day. We're still working on the radiator. I got the brake booster out yesterday. You guys all saw all that. So I went ahead and got the, so this is just a block uh, that's used to, because we have both these ports to go from the front and rear, or excuse me, front and rear reservoir sections. And this goes into just a, just a block that that's machined with these fittings, for these fittings. And this hose comes up and forward and goes into that reservoir that's mounted on the firewall so you can kind of gravity bleed all of this um so i went ahead and got these power grips on this as well uh honestly the way that the, as tight as these fittings were on this i think we probably could run it without anything and they would have been fine but you always want to be uh precautious so i went ahead and got those put on this morning dad's working on some spacers but to put behind that crossbar uh, that goes in front of the radiator to get that spaced out and give that radiator some clearance. So he's been over here working on that right now. And so we went ahead and he's got one of them done right here. So this will go, this is backwards, right? So this, this will be facing toward the back of the truck. This will go in here to space that out to give it plenty of clearance so it'll support everything like it needs to. Tie that whole, tie that whole radiator cradle together and then, but also get it spaced out enough to give us plenty of clearance on the radiator itself. So we're just pushing forward. Um, we'll get that stuff in hopefully soon. I'm gonna go down to here and check and uh, check all the bolts that are holding this bracket that holds the master cylinder and the brake booster in. So go into the truck here and we'll give them a look, make sure everything's tight. So that was the whole reason we pulled this stuff out, right? To make sure all these fittings were tight everything for the most part was in and in, in just kind of a mock-up um so now we're just we pulled it out put the clamps on uh we're going to tighten up any bolts that may be loose most likely everything's pretty tight but again it's all about just making sure you you make sure you check it make sure everything's good try to make everything bulletproof so i'm going to go into the truck now and check that out so yesterday i didn't notice this dad reminded me after i got this brake booster out um this he built all of this so i thought this bracket was actually welded into the frame it's actually not he bolted it um on the top and on the side here um so we can this is what i'm actually checking so i said i was gonna get in here and check these bolts so i just need to make sure they're already in lock nuts so looks like they're good um we'll have to pull this out probably have to take this lever off of this bracket and then we could figure out some way of doing the return spring here. So we might, we talked, me and dad talked about it last night, 
maybe we can drill a hole through this or do something to have a, a cam or something that comes off of this and then run that forward. But just looking at it, we are extremely limited on options on where to put that. So, and then the exhaust is also directly in front of that too. So we'll have to figure that out next, I guess. But I'm gonna go here, check all these nuts and bolts, make sure that those are bolted in good. Uh, this is the hose that runs up to the reservoir. So once we get it, um, once we get all this stuff tight and checked, we can, uh, I'll check this cross member also. Um, once we do all that, we can get that brake booster and master cylinder back in here, get this on, get one of those power grip clamps on it. We might be able to shorten this a little, not hundred percent sure yet. Might have to shorten it some. So anyway, we'll figure all that out. We'll do that next. So I've been meaning to talk about these a little bit. Um, so as we're trying to get this thing started, I was going to go ahead and get the battery cables routed. Um, the battery cables uh, that we use are from a company called Battery Cables USA. And you can see these are single aught battery cables. They're big. They're beefy. You know, they're going to carry all the voltage and current that we need them to. Um, we really like these. You can order them. You can order them and pick your length that you want to use. You can pick uh, a negative or positive battery um, battery side of the cable, and then we can get. We'll show it to you later when we get them uh, hooked in. But you can also choose what size. You can also choose what size hole that is on the other side of the cable. So for us, we're going to run the negative lead of the cable under the starter bolt, so it's grounded to the block of the engine. And then the positive side will go over to the um, positive post onto the starter. Um, so, but Battery Cables USA, that you can build them however you want, pretty much customize them however you want, as long as you want. Uh, they go, I think they can do double odd, triple odd. They can do some really, uh, some big stuff. So those single lots have been working really good. Put a set on my truck and until they got into the headers, they did really good. Then we got them pulled off and everything's been great again. Um, so yeah, so you can go there and basically custom build and order your battery cables however you want them. That's what we use for pretty much everything and I think it's gonna do more than enough for this truck. So we're gonna go ahead and get those kind of routed and figured out where they need to go, make sure that they clearance everything, don't get into the exhaust, just like everything else we've done so far. All right, tell me what you're doing. I'm uh, making a, hopefully a spring hanger return spring hanger for this brake pedal. Uh, if these, if I got the bolt center right on this thing, this thing should stick through in this area. Let's hang on a minute here and we'll see if we got it. See if we got any more close. So we talked about it earlier. We were talking about using this bolt down here, maybe the end of the bolt drilling a hole through it or something. Um, but if you looked at it, that bolt, whenever it came where it came out was basically dead in line with the exhaust. So anywhere forward of that would have been really hard to hang the other end of the spring itself or to hook the other end of the spring. We haven't even found the type of spring we're going to use yet. But so he made a bracket that will go on the other side of this lever over here. Excuse me. <laughs> on this side of the bracket. And uh, the bracket will go on that side of the lever and stick forward to clearance this cross member, clear the exhaust and everything else. And then we can run it down to maybe a frame in the bolt or something like that. Or oh, excuse me, a bolt in the frame. Oh, yeah, you can't get that out unless you take the lever off. That's exactly right. That's all right. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna, all I need to know is bolt centers. I got the bolt centers correct. Appears like you probably got it right. I think it was one inch on center. Yes, it is. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah. While he was working on that, I went ahead and got all these fittings tight. So there's like one, two, three, four, five, six. 
four, five, six. There's a seventh one here somewhere. Can't remember where. There's like seven fittings here that had to be tightened up. I went ahead and rolled back here and tightened up the fitting. The uh, this T here, so that there's one line that comes off the proportioning valve here. It runs to the back, goes into that T fitting there, and then uh, to the left, you know, of course, the left side rear brakes. To the right, to the uh, driver side rear brakes, and then so there's a handful of different fittings out through here. There's that T. There's a union back there that goes into the soft brake lines that go to the uh, to the calipers themselves on both sides, and then there was a there's a handful of unions up here too. So I tightened up everything that I could get to, kind of by myself. We have a, still have a union up here behind the boxing and the frame that goes out to the rubber lines to so these calipers. That has to be checked, but in general, all the brake lines are on here and tightened now. So hopefully, we don't have any leaks, because then it would be my fault. He'd be mad. It would be that bad. Okay, it is the next day. We have been going for a little while now. We've been trying to find some more parts. So to get this thing fired, we've just got basically a few a handful of kind of like oddities that we're trying to uh, work out, some parts that we have to find. So uh, the first thing that we did uh, today was we went and got some, when we were working on the brakes yesterday, we looked back at kind of what Dad had done here. And in here, you can see he made a tab that comes off the frame. Uh, behind this is a brake fitting. So if you take this clip that's now there, it's right here. If you take that out, this fitting comes forward. You can tighten the actual brake fitting that goes into this. And this is like some dash three or four AN lines. And these are the stainless brake lines that go out to calipers. So this is, looks exactly like it would on any sort of, you know, modern pickup truck or uh, even like my truck, like the 86 style trucks. So if you... Um, we did those, got that mounted up. We had to find some clips. So the standard brake clips, for whatever reason, don't weren't they didn't work. They didn't really fit. So we had to go to the store and find some C clips that would work in that place. So we got those in. Then we started looking at the fuel tank itself, and we had to we had a couple of fittings back here that we needed to get plugged because since we're running the since we're running the in tank fuel pump here. This would be more if it was for, if you were just using like a standard fuel system, if you're using just a, you know, like a 350 or something like that with a, a mechanical fuel pump, you would use those lines because then it all kind of, uh, it would all go gravity from the bottom. So we got those plugs. We had some of those pipe fittings. Now the other thing that we're working on right now is this needs a vent. So we need to find something that will screw into this. It's quarter inch NPT. So we need to do that and vent it and, uh, preferably have some sort of like rollover safety valve. So they make safety valves that if, God forbid, if something happened and the truck ended up upside down, it's not gonna spill fuel out. There's a, there's a ball check valve inside of that valve that would go into the closed position so it allows the tank to vent, but if it got turned over, it would that check valve would close the vent and it wouldn't let any fuel spill, spill out. Uh, so as long as the tank was still intact, there wouldn't be any fuel spilled out anywhere. So trying to find that now um, trying to think of what else we went through and finished tightening up all the brake lines so we went to the back of all the calipers and got those tight those are pretty much all we had left was the actual uh, banjo bolts that go into the calipers themselves so those are now all tight um, we did go to the nap store uh, at the same time we were getting those clips and got uh, some springs that we thought we would be able to use for the brake return spring all of those are just a little too stout. They're a little too heavy for what we need. Um, so we're still in the search for that. So right now we need this vent and we need the brake return spring and then uh, just kind of like other minis minimal things that we kind of have to do but are <laughs> really important. Getting that fuel regulator back in place on the frame, getting the fuel line run from it up to the back of the engine itself. Um, we need to get some hose and put on the brake booster. Not that that's like stopping us from starting the truck, but it would just be, since all that's kind of already there, it'd be nice to go ahead and get that run. We can kind of run that at the same time that we are running the fuel line because it's all kind of going in that same general area up there. So we can run all that together. That's just checking, just trying to check little things off. Um, 
so that's what we've been doing. So as far as today, so far, not a whole lot of, uh, not a whole lot of just physical work as much as just trying to find parts and get some of these little things uh, wrapped up because the plan and the reason why we're kind of going through all this while the truck's up is when we do start this thing, we're going to, we're going to take and we're going to bring the tank up. We'll put it back under the frame. It mounts on the bottom side of the frame here. So we'll go ahead and get that put back in place. We're going to put the wheels and tires on it, get the truck out of here. So just in case, again, kind of one of those like worst case scenarios, if the truck have something happened to catch fire or it's not in the shop, you know, it's outside. We want to put it out in the driveway, get it outside. Um, so the forecast for the next few days isn't looking so great. So I don't think that we're going to be able to get the truck fired in this video this week. I know it's a little disappointing, but I think that that'll give us time to get these little things wrapped up because we've still got to, you know, tighten up the exhaust manifolds and tighten up the, the actual exhaust itself and get it not hanging from uh, right now. It's kind of hanging from zip ties. So if we run that how it is, uh, the exhaust, you know, those would eventually burn off so and drop the exhaust. So there's just a lot of these little things that we have to at least get, you know, let's say 80% wrapped up before we can before we can start the truck. But we're going to go ahead and do that. And since we don't want to run this thing outside, it's been inside for so long now. And, you know, we don't have a hood on it and stuff like that. You know, we, we don't want to back it up in the rain. We don't want to work in the rain, you know, I don't, <laughs> if, if we can help it. So, um, so. I think that's really kind of where we are as we stand right now. I will give you an update if we get any further for the rest of this evening. One thing that I'm going to go ahead and do, um, I'm sure I would guess that as you've seen us work on this thing, you saw this bundle of wires that I had run coming out of the firewall and it was run down the top of the fender here. Um, that was all the power to the headlights. Uh, it was going to be power to the, the fan um turn signals parking lots all that stuff was all in that bundle um but me and dad got to talking about it and basically if the if the engine ever has to come back out of this thing for whatever reason if we want to do upgrades or if it just something happens and it needs to come out in general the front clip has to come off this thing so i know it's shocking uh, but there's not just a lot of extra room in here to get all this pulled out and there's basically no way to get enough angle on the motor and transmission to pull it out without pulling the front clip off. So all of those wires were really going to be in the way. You know, there's the plugs in the back of the lights and things like that, but that's really still going to be a hassle because uh, the way that they were going to run, they were going to run kind of down through the grill and then over into each light. So that's going to be a hassle. So what I am going to do, instead of doing that, I'm going to take this bundle and run it down with this other bundle that's going to the back of the truck. And what I'll do is put it, feed it through the frame rail. So instead of, instead of going back, like I did with this bundle here, I'll come down and I'll bring it forward and I'll keep that in the frame rail and then have that come out right here. You can't really see it here. There we go. Have it come out somewhere like here and then run over to all the lights. That way we can unplug the lights and disconnect them or however we want to do it. And then if we need to pull the engine for whatever reason, we can pull this front end off and it'll be a lot less of a hassle than if we, you know, tried to run it like that. So uh, I'll go ahead and run that. It's going to be a little bit of a pain just because there's a bunch of wires that are in it. So to keep them all straight and to make sure that they don't get, they don't get uh, caught up in anything as we go through, I'll have to bundle the end of them and then feed them through, maybe take some, uh, take some, steel line or something and run back there and, and tape them up to it and pull it through and make it a little easier so i am going to go ahead and do that and get those out of the way before we do any of the rest of this stuff so you guys saw, saw a sandblast and take that 55 tag to one of dad's friends to get him to redo it while we were there talking to him he said why don't you guys find a farm truck tag for that thing in 55 they had plates that actually still said farm truck on them Sorry? First, first, it was the first year they had them on it? Gotcha. Okay, so he was telling us it was actually the first year that it physically said farm truck, you know, and it says farm truck NC55. So we started looking for one. We're going to let him go ahead and finish that tag. We'll put it on streetcar or something. You know, we have a plenty of 55 stuff. Um, and then I started digging on the internet and actually found a 
farm truck, NC farm truck, 55 tag. So that's a pretty cool little piece there. And I think it's already kind of patinaed. It's not really like it's not in perfect condition by any means. But I mean, like I told dad, this thing's uh, 70 years old, almost pushing 70 years old at this point. So uh, I think it's going to look really good. We'll just kind of clean up some of these spots a little. Um, but really, we're going to kind of leave this as it is and run it on the truck because it kind of goes with the truck, even though it does have this kind of uh, poor repaint on it at this point. You know, it's dented and or not dented, but it's it chipped and uh, scratched and stuff like that from hanging in a barn for all those years. So put this on it and I think it kind of goes with the truck. I think it'll look pretty cool on it. Um, so, yeah, kind of a neat little find and it's always good to have people that know more than you do about things like that. So I think that's going to do us, wrap us up for this week. Um, we are, we've got just like I said, we've got a bunch of little things that are kind of adding up to us here right here at the end. We went ahead and got a few things ordered, uh, that a vent valve or a, a, a rollover vent valve for the fuel tank. That'll be here in a couple days. Um, so we've got to kind of wrap those things up. I think Dad's going to go ahead and get a bracket made uh, for the other side of that return spring so we can find us either use one of these springs that we found or possibly find a different one, maybe just a little lighter um, as far as that goes. So I think for this week, that's going to wrap us up. We'll try everything in our power to get this thing fired next week if possible. Um, I think I've got to travel a couple days next week, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully if we can get it, we'll do it. If we can't, then we'll do it. <laughs> we'll say we're going to do it in the next one. So. Thanks for everyone that's been following along and commenting on uh, commenting on the videos and, and keeping up with what we're doing and following us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, it really means a lot to us. Uh, thanks for everyone that's been checking out that drag racing video, the, the VHS drags. That thing has been extremely popular and way more uh, popular than we ever expected that it would be. Uh, look out on March 1st. We're going to put out the next one of those. My plan is to try and put those out the first of each month for a little while. Um, so we haven't fully decided which one it's going to be just yet. We have a handful to pick from at this point. So go ahead and start looking out for that on March 1st. We'll put it up at 6.30 then um, and see if we can find another one that people enjoyed as much as that first one. So thanks everyone for watching Shift Points.